Hi, Rupert. Thanks very much for joining me on the show. Hi, Carl. Lovely to lovely to be with you, and thank you for inviting me. No, oh, it's uh, it's a real pleasure. I've been really looking forward to this. Um, I have a couple of your books here with me. Being aware of being aware and, and being myself, uh, which we'll which we'll touch on. Um, I think one of the one of the quotes on the on the back of the being myself book, Rupert, pretty much says it doesn't say everything, but it certainly says a lot. It says everything that we have ever truly longed for is to be found in the simple knowing of our being as it is essentially is. But just just go into some into some more detail on that because I think if we get before we get into your life story, I think that would be a great place to to start yes. for everybody listening. Yes. Well. Everything we have ever longed for, the, the, the quotation starts with that, everything we have ever longed for. Well, what, what is it that we all really long for above all else? It, it is to be happy. Um, we may think that, that we long um, for uh, a, a house, an intimate companion, a family, uh, to win at a sporting event, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, if we then wonder why it is that we want any of these things. It's always because we think that they will make us happy. So what we really long for is happiness, peace. And um, most of us uh, seek um, happiness uh, through the acquisition of objects, substances, activities, relationships, and and so on. And and sooner or later, these, these um, fail us uh, uh, often enough for us to begin to question that that happiness can never be um, acquired or attained through objective experience. And uh, th this leads us to the understanding that that uh, happiness is really only to be found within us in, in, in our essential self or our essential being. Now, what do I mean by our essential self or being? I mean, that that the part of us that we really essentially truly are, when, when everything, when everything that is not essential to us has uh, been let go of, thoughts, images, feelings, memories, activities, relationships, all, all of these, although they may be very precious, very intimate, they're not, they're not essential to us. They're not always with us. So when we, when we take off all the, the layers of our experience, so to speak, what is left is our, our core identity, just the pure feeling of being, I am. And all the great religious and spiritual traditions point in one way or another to this fundamental understanding that the peace and the happiness that everybody longs for uh, uh, depends upon and resides in the knowing of our own essential being or, or self. And I think you know, most of the people who listen to the podcast where you put play, play sport, primarily, primarily golf, and I think golf potentially is a, a great example of that, that a lot of people, or most people begin to play the game for its, its pure essence, it's for, the, for the pure joy of moving the body to hit a ball to a, to a target. And they, they get, they acquire skills in the game, they get better at the game and they, you know, gain some prominence, perhaps they win some tournaments. And then slowly but surely, and I've witnessed it so many times with so many players, the game itself changes from a direct experience to one of I'm playing golf today or tennis or whatever it may be for something that I may receive in, in the future. And, and for so many players, that's when the, the, the disappointment begins, but, but actually very easily you can lose the pure joy and love of playing the game. I think that's very true. So uh, as you say, you start playing the sport, you gain some prominence, maybe you, 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 you win um, some some tournaments, and strangely, you don't find that you are permanently happy. <laughs> yeah. The illusion is so shattered. You, 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 the illusion is shattered. You, you, you've reached, and and this um, you, you you'll be very well well aware of this. You you, you reach the pinnacle mm. of your profession. Even you, you you achieve the one thing that everybody in your sport wants to achieve. You're there at the very top, and yet. What you wanted was not to be at the top. What you wanted was to be happy. And you find still, in spite of having everything, you, you haven't got the one thing you truly want, which is happiness. So then that is that that really precipitates a crisis 
in in the person. They've spent their whole life um, I- I- investing their time, their energy in in achieving the one thing that they thought the the, the one the, the goal that they thought would bring them the one thing they want, and it it, it doesn't work. They don't end up at peace. They don't end up fulfilled. There's still this emptiness inside nagging away at them more. I need something else. Something is still missing. And this, when you've gone, especially in in the elites, with elite athletes and and sports people, when you've gone as far as you can go, this is, this is such a a, a disillusionment. Like, like you say, the illusion is, is shattered. So what next? Where else can I find? If I can't find happiness here, where, where else can I find it? I can I can imagine people listening to this then would would ask the question Rupert, from from a, a non dual perspective that you're coming from here what 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 is is the room for goals is the room for ambitions in in the sort of everyday life is 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 that something that shouldn't be chased after or, or no on? no not at all I think that would be unrealistic Carl to to think that 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 one um, shouldn't have ambition. No, you 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 need you 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 need something to 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 pull you forward. It, it, to have goals, to have ambitions. That that that's fine. It's rather not to invest one's happiness mm-hmm. in the achievement of one's goals. Mm-hmm. And in fact, if you if you enjoy if you're if if you enjoy the moment, then you you you've got what you want in the moment. You're just playing the game. You're playing your your, your golf tournament, your your tennis match, your football match. You're you're for, for for the joy of doing so. Which, as you rightly say, was what started you off in the first place. When you started playing golf, you didn't start playing golf because you wanted to win a tournament. You wanted because you wanted to be immersed in the experience, emotionally, physically, intellectually, and it, you wanted to. And 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 you 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 loved what you did. It gave you joy. In, in, but then um, it, it, it changes the, the the goals, the ambitions, and and you cease enjoying the moment, and you project your joy into some future accomplishment. So nothing wrong with having goals, being ambitious. You you need to if you're developing at a sport or indeed any kind of endeavor. So so that the, the the secret is not to invest one's one's happiness in it, not to invest one's identity in it. In other words, who you are, who you essentially are remains the same. When you say, um, I won, or I lost, it's the same I. Mm, So losing and if 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 one day I can be a winner, and one day I can be a loser, winning and losing cannot be essential to what I am. Mm. Uh, What I am remains present throughout. So if if we if we recognize who we essentially are, independent of winning and losing, then we don't we, we don't get crushed when we lose, and nor do we get inflated when we win. when we win. Our identity is not invested in it because we we found our our peace elsewhere, mm. not in n- not in winning. We found our peace and happiness where it belongs in ourself. So so yes, fine to have goals and ambitions. But but uh, improvement targets every all of this I think is 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 necessary in sport. Mm. But the only important thing: don't invest your happiness in the outcome of the game. And of course, the paradox Rupert, is that what what you've just described, when any golfer, tennis player, footballer, is completely immersed in the activity, that the puzzle of the game the challenge of the game, when, when they are completely absorbed in that, the, the paradox is that that is the gr- greatest place to be to of course. engineer of some of the outcomes of that you course. perceive that you would need or, or want. Absolutely. You're in the zone. Isn't that what every athlete wants to do? What, do, do don't they want to, to, to play? Well, when they're playing, they want to be playing in the zone. Mm. What, what does it mean, playing in the zone? It means playing free of the sense of any self identity. You're not aware of yourself. You're not, you're not reflecting back on yourself. How am I doing? How am I appearing? Am I winning? You're, 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 you're completely, you're free of any sense of being a, a separate, limited individual. You're just participating in the flow. You're, you're, you're one with the flow of the universe. You haven't separated yourself out from the universe as an independent entity. And as a result, 
you feel you can't go wrong mm. because because your activity is the universe's activity it's just flowing through you you're completely one with the moment and you perform not, not, not only at the best of your ability but but beyond that that that's where you surpass mm. your normal uh, ability because you're no longer limiting yourself by thinking oh i'm this person this is what people think of me this is what's going to happen if i win that's what's going to happen if i look you, you you're free of this self limitation and as a result you 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 perform at a level that is beyond your normal capacity mm. Mm. Uh, and Talking about sport in terms of teams and, and direct competitors, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking out loud about um, two, two uh, Open Championships, one way back in the 70s when Jack Nicholas and, and Tom Watson went head-to-head -head at Turnbrick. It was called the Jewel in the Sun. And then a few years ago, Henrik Stenson and Phil Mickelson slugged it out over you know, the final couple of rounds. And the, the level of golf almost transcended the game. I remember going up to Royal Troon myself a few weeks later after the Open and, and you know, one of the members said that, you know, the, the course isn't as easy as they made it look, you know, it was, it, <laughs> it, it, yeah. but, but as opposed to it being, them being direct, yes, they were competitors with each other, but it was almost that the two of them engineered something greater than themselves. Exactly. exactly. I, I'm more of a, a tennis fan and, and, player than I am golf, but there, there, there's a lot of similarities between the two. So forgive me for using a, a tennis analogy rather than a, a golf, but there's it, it a direct comparison. Take, take the great rivalry over the last decade of Federer and Nadal. They, of course, at one level, they are, they are opponents, mm. but they have both so excelled as a result of the, facing the other. That the, the other, in, in, in some ways, at a different level, you can say the other, the, the opponent is on their side. Mm. That, that they, they perform, as you say, beyond their normal capabilities, precisely because of their opponent. Mm. That their opponent has helped them. So in a way, although they're, they're competitors, they're rivals, that, that they are each other's best friend in a way. That, that they are each other's best trainer. Mm. And what is also beautiful in sports that you find sometimes is that as a result of this, rivals become real friends. Mm. That off the court, where they are, of course, playing the role of rival opponent, that a very deep friendship um, develops between them. And, and I think this is, it, it, it's for this reason that they have, when they're not kind of personally at loggerheads with each other, that they realize how much the other has helped elevate them to, as you say, beyond their normal capacities. And, and, and so there is a kind of mutual respect and even love for one another. There's a great program on, I think, during Wimbledon last year about the, the Borg and McEnroe and how, what, obviously, they were great rivals. It was an intense rivalry in the, in the, in the 80s, 70s and 80s. But they became essentially very, very great friends, and and they yeah. both recognised there was there was more similarity between them than absolutely, than, than, absolutely than, than difference. Yes, yes, yes. From a again from a, a sporting perspective, but that most most of the time, in or a lot of the time in sport, we're, we're having to deal with setbacks. You don't you don't win the game. You, you don't you don't finish at the top of the leaderboard. You you lose you lose the tennis tennis match from again from a, from a non-dual perspective that, that that we're looking at here how how would you how would you recommend for people to to look at setbacks and challenges when they when they when they come along well the setbacks and challenges when they come along they never they feel like setbacks. They feel like failures. They are, of course, um, opportunities to uh, become aware of what, where one's game is is um, limited. What needs improving? It, again, the, the 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 apparent setbacks. But when when looked at, and and I'm, I'm sure you've had this numerous times. What appeared to be a setback in the moment two years later, turned around to be the transformative moment in their career. Mm. 
because they became if they had won that game they wouldn't have become so acutely aware of what needed to be developed so although at the time it felt like a failure in the, in the from a from a fr from a distance um in hindsight it actually the, the the failure the setback was actually cooperating with their improvement as long as the setback was not so severe that it crushed them mm. that 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 it um that they gave up that so that that in a way is i, I think probably where a a coach is valid because sometimes if we fail we 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 so sink into our own negative feelings and view that it takes sometimes someone someone separate from ourselves that 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 the coach to 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 see the positive in what feels for us a, a wholly negative exp experience you you mentioned the role there of 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 coaches or 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 teachers it's clear in in, in your life you've you've been with and studied and, and benefited from from many you know wise wise people around the world in india and places like that but it, it it sounds like that your your main teacher francis lucille came in, into your life at a certain time and 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 the things that he gave you had a huge impact on your life subsequent from from that how, how did that all come about rupert the, the, the meeting with francis and then the the effect that his uh, teachings had upon you i have been very interested in these um matters um the non-dual understanding for, for for a long time uh since really since my my mid teens and um, my 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 interest, um, what was initially an interest, became a passion in my early twenties. Actually, after my my first uh, romantic relationship um, came to an end, uh, I had presumed we would just get married and live happily ever after. In the that Mills kind of, and Boone ending, it, it, exactly, and it all came very uh, uh, abruptly to an end in a, in a two minute phone call. And I I remember just the, the next couple of days, just, just 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 wondering that if this one thing, in, in this case, it was a, a relationship, one person, I, I had invested all my future happiness in this one relationship, and it came to an end in a two minute phone call, mm. and and this this question, which I had already asked myself, but it really became a, a, a burning interest. It, if if anything can disappear or come to an end in one's life, um, uh, one's health, a relationship, uh, uh, um, a job, uh, uh, um, in in what can we reliably invest our desire for happiness? It became clear to me that that nothing is reliable, mm. um, and therefore, am I destined always to to oscillate between a, a, a sense of lack or incompleteness punctuated by brief moments of happiness. And so th this really um, deepened my search. And as a result of this, I, I, I went very deeply into this non-dual understanding. Um, and eventually I, I, I met Francis and, and really over the first few years with him, it became very clear to me. It was already clear intellectually for me, but it became very clear in my experience that, that, that you know that the only place to, to find resolution the only place to find peace what was in oneself in one's own being and, and it's referred to in the in the religious tradition as the as the peace that passeth understanding that is the the peace that that is not dependent on what does or does not take place in experience the the, the peace or the joy that is prior to and independent of the content of experience and the, the, from from the teachings that you received, what, what did you what did you find? Because I think the point that you made there is so important that you, you you can intellectually read a book and grasp this intellectually, but for it to be part yes. of your very being is a different is a different story. Yes. What, yes. Go Sorry. Go, go. No. No. Well, um, 
th through the the um, through those first well the fact the several years with, with Francis it, with meditation guided meditations and conversations I I would trace my way back over and over and again to my essential self or my essential being let, let me give you an example of what I mean by that um, well, I could give you two examples one way would be for instance it, in normal circumstances now for instance we are aware of um we're, we're aware of the content of our conversation together uh, our bodily sensations the temperature of the air on our skin our, our our legs on the chair we're aware of the sight of our room and, and so on in most for most people most of the time experience is taken up completely with the contents mm. thoughts images feelings memories and and so on and there's one element of experience that we that we ignore and and that is whatever it is that is aware of the content of experience mm. we're aware of our thoughts we're aware of our feelings we're aware of our sensations and perceptions well what is it that is aware of all of these whatever it is that is aware of our thoughts and feelings is not itself a thought and a feeling mm. but that is what i am mm. so it it involves a a, a kind of softening of the focus of attention from the objective content of our experience and and a coming back a sinking backwards of the attention towards the the presence of awareness which lies in the background of experience mm -hmm. uh, another way um, to describe the same pathway by which we become aware of ourselves would, would be to notice for instance that we're always uh, um, formulating our experience in statements such as um, I'm having a conversation with Carl, I'm sitting on a chair, I'm 61 years old, uh, um, I'm cold or tired or hungry and, and so on. Uh, I'm married or single, I'm a father, I'm a mother. Always I am, I am dot dot dot. Mm. All experience, the I am is always there mm. and it, it, it's then qualified by a feeling, a, um, uh, a state, a, 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 an activity, a relationship, but the same I am. What is this pure I am, our pure self, our pure, pure being? So normally when we feel, say, let's say I am, we say I am lonely. Mm. The loneliness occupies the, our entire attention and the I am part of the experience goes into the background. Mm. When we say I am tired, the tiredness occupies the, for, the, 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 the entire screen of experience and the I am disappears into the background. Well, if at any moment of experience, um, I am upset, for instance, we, we emphasize the I am aspect. Mm. We soften the focus of our attention from the upset, the loneliness, the tiredness or whatever it is and emphasize just the fact of being emphasize the I am in this way we we go back to our essential being and as we go back there we begin to rest there mm -hmm. that, that's really the essence of meditation or prayer to to return to our being and and rest there in, in that as that and in time it's it's innate qualities of of, of peace and and quiet joy uh, make themselves felt and in fact, I, I, I would suggest that this is what happens briefly when we let, let's take, let, let's take in um, football, another sport that I love, um, you score uh, while the game is in play, the players are in a state of um, dynamism that they're, they're, they're seeking that they're, they're, they're going towards something. Mm. And what they're going towards is not present in the moment. That, that, that what are they going towards scoring a goal mm. it's something that's going to happen in the future mm. so all during the game that the mind is orientated towards the future everything they do they do for the sake of the future for the sake of the goal yeah. that we're building up for now something um, magical happens when the goal is scored mm. at that moment that the drive the seeking comes to an end because we're no longer preparing for the future. We, we have what we want. Mm. 
And at, in other words, at that moment, the, 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 the seeking activity of the mind comes to an end. And as a result, our the, the peace or the joy that is the nature of We think it was because we scored the goal that we're happy. No, we're not happy because of the goal. If you're four nil down and you score a goal, it's four one. You're not particularly happy. The guys don't go around celebrating. They rush to the back of the net. They pick the ball up and they rush back to the halfway. Mm. Why? Because it hasn't brought their seeking to an end. Mm. It's not the goal itself they want. It's to be relieved of seeking. this, of seeking and to be brought into the now. What happens when we're in the now? We are one with the universe. There is no ego present in the now. The ego is present as the activity of seeking and resisting. So when we score the goal, win the game, whatever it is, at that moment, the ego comes to an end. Mm. And as a result, our innate joy, the, the joy of simply being, shines. And then the mind returns and wrongly attributes the happiness to the goal or the, the winning the tournament. No, that, that's, that's not what caused the happiness. The happiness is uncaused. It was in your being all the time, mm. but it was covered up by your seeking activity. It's so interesting that, Rupert. It, and I'm, I'm thinking of, of, of the opposite of, of the ecstasy of scoring goals or winning, winning tournaments. Uh, anxiety plays a huge part for many people's experience. Yes. In, in, in sports in a, in a very detrimental or it can be in a, in a very detrimental way. But I think what you're suggesting there is that is that rather than rather than resisting the, the anxiety, rather than resisting the feelings in, in the body, that you actually just become more aware of what it is that is experiencing the anxiety. Yes, yes, you're quite right. Uh, for, for the one that loses the game or the one that if you're if you're the keeper and, and the, the, the opponent scores, you, you don't feel this wave of joy. You feel the opposite. Mm. You feel a moment of depression or despair or whatever it is. Why? Because at that stage, at that moment, the, the winning team or the goal scorer is liberated from the experience of seeking. In other words, they're liberated temporarily from the from, from the confinement of the ego and they experience their innate joy. But as the loser, your sense of yourself as an ego is enhanced by losing. Mm. You, you, you feel, oh, I've failed. It doesn't liberate you from the ego. It strengthens the ego. Mm. And the ego is, is, a, is a covering over our innate happiness. So you feel unhappy. You're not actually unhappy because the goal was scored against you. You're unhappy because your sense of separation has been enhanced. You feel your your separateness even more strongly than you did before. Mm -hmm. But there was a a, a, a wonderful um, a wonderful example. I, I had a tennis coach um, in America once, and he was uh, because I used to go. I still do go often to California to hold retreats, and and whenever I do, I always try and organize some, some, play some um, tennis, play some tennis and organize a, some coaching with a local coach. Anyway, I, I did this a number of times with, with, with a, a, a local um, coach who was himself in the, probably in the top 500 in, in the world. He, he was an extremely good player and he was coaching at the time. One of the, um, she was in the under, she was un, un, in the under 14. She was one of the top 10 under 14 players in the world. So he was coaching at a very, very high level. And he told me a story about her, that every time she made a mistake, she put the ball in the net or put it wide or, or long, she would, um, she would smile. The opposite of what you, 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 you would normally do, you'd normally frown, go down on yourself. And, and, and she would do the smile, the smile, because what, what, what do we, what does a smile indicate? When, when we smile, we smile when we're happy. Mm. We smile. In other words, the smile is a, a bodily expression of this temporary loss of ego. Mm. It's the natural, uh, and, or, or laughter is an even, even a, a stronger expression of it. But when, when we smile, at that moment, we, we smile because we're happy, we're one with the moment, and there's no ego present. So she must, I'm sure she didn't formulate it like this to herself, but she must have intuited 
that in when you go when you play the wrong shot when you lose the point that 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 to become negative about it to become depressed to go down on yourself only reinforces and then you're more likely to 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 underperform at the next shot so she intuitively knew that in order to erase this pattern in her that she should mimic at the level of the body what you normally do when you win the point and therefore erase the ego even though in a situation where it would normally have been enhanced mm. yes it, it was a it was it, it, it was in, it was inspired i i think it's unlikely and, and not necessary for her to formulate it in these terms but it was efficient mm. And you often see this also a, a similar example with tennis players. If they've played a, 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 a again a bad shot, they put the ball in the net or long or on. In between the point, they'll they'll do a shadow swing. Mm. Why? Because the last shot they made was incorrect. Mm. They didn't finish high enough. They didn't start low enough. Whatever it was, and that habit, the body, as you know well for, for, from your from your experience in golf, that that the body. It, um, it builds habits very easily, and, and everything we do leaves leaves a train trace, albeit a faint one, in the body. So if you've just played the wrong swing, that the body remembers that, whether it's a, in the golf or the body remembers it. You have to erase the body's memory mm. of that. You have to wash the body clean, mm. in the same way that you have to wash the mind clean of of, of the ego. It, it, it's, a great, it's a great story and it reminds me uh, two of the great coaches in golf uh, Lynn Marriott and Pia Nielsen I know a couple of their students who've won major golf tournaments uh, one of them in particular I, I, I can't remember her name Aria Jatanagar I think um, what, 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 what she what, what they had them do what they had her do was actually and you could see it on TV was to actually smile as she was walking into the golf shot not not exactly. not waiting for the golf shot Perfect. to make us make a smile she Perfect. was smi smiling before she'd actually gone Perfect. in to play the shot lovely lovely perfect L lovely example it reminds me of a, of a story of an elderly woman um that i read j j just qu quite recently she was um her husband of, uh, of 60 years had, had, had recently died and she was 90 years old. She had to go into a home. So uh, she, 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 she was moving into this home and the, the carer who was looking afterwards took, took her into, this, into, the, into the elevator and was um, taking her up to her, her room and describing the room to her. And she said, um, she said, oh, she said, I love it. And, 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 and he said, but, but, but you haven't seen it yet. And she said, that's got nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, it, 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 exactly. No, I love that example of, of, of um, smiling as you go towards your, your shot, not, not. That sends the right message to the, to the body to relax, yeah. uh, to be free of tension. And it also sends the right, the right message to the mind. It puts you in the best possible position to, to execute your shot not only to the best of your ability, but to surpass your previous ability, because you are free of your previous limitations. Mm. Mm. The ego is a limitation on what we really are. It confines us. It confines something that is essentially unlimited and squeezes it into something that is limited. Mm. So w w whenever people that, that are in, in sports, people that um, exceed their limits that you, they can only do so when, when, when you let go of a limit and you need to let go of that limit, both um, intellectually, emotionally and physically it, to, to, to enable your to enable you to expand and therefore perform at a level that you were previously not capable of. Mm. So and, and the ego is a self-imposed limitation. Nobody imposes it on us, although people encourage us when, when people say, you know, early on in life, you're you're. You, you're no good. You're a loser. You, you, you're this. Um, this is in, it, this uh, puts us into a, a box, and we collude with that box. I, 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 I can't. I'm no good. I'll never succeed. And, and in this case, we, in this case, we, we, we limit our own possibilities. Mm. Mm. And, and and what? Uh, um, sorry, just just what one? No, that, that, that's that's enough. You, 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 yeah, no. I was, I was just going to say as we. 
as we as, as we lose that that shackle of of, of capability or perceived capability I, i'd welcome your thoughts rupert and it's and it's i suppose a bit far out there to, to go in this direction but I've, I've seen it on a number of occasions i'll give you one example again sorry to use a golfing one but it probably one of the most famous putts that has ever been hit in 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 the history of the game was when the late great Sevi Ballesteros hold a winning putt at St Andrews on the final green. There's a, there's a famous picture of him looking like a matador as the ball goes into the hole. And if you actually watch the putt, uh, it, it's never going in. The ball the ball was on, always on the high side of the hole, and it seems to dive in at the, at the end somehow. And Sevi always said that that he actually willed that ball in, in into the hole, almost as though there was a another force out there that he connected to in that particular moment that, that, that engineered a result. And I, I know it sounds quite fanciful to say, what, 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 would you, what would your thoughts be on that kind of exploration? It, it sounds far out, you're right. It, it, it sounds fanciful, but I, I, I don't think it's as far out as as it sounds, uh, although when he says, I will the ball into the hole, what he's trying to do is articulate something that isn't easy to articulate. And he's articulated it in kind of ordinary terms that don't really do justice to what happened. So the best he can do is say, I willed it into the hole. Yeah. Now, when, when we hear that, we think, oh, oh, come on, that's just beyond the, but, but I think if, if we, if we uh, allow him some, if we cut him some slack, if we realize that what actually happened is, is something that's almost impossible to describe, and he was just doing his best with very limited words, I think that what he's saying is actually, there's some truth in it. Now, what, what might that be? Uh, how, how, how can I describe this? Take this, take the analogy of a dream. When we have a dream at night, the entire content of the dream, everything that takes place in the dream is the activity of our own mind. And our own mind is a, is a single, homogeneous, indivisible field of, of consciousness, or, or, albeit a limited one. Now, in the dream itself, we don't experience it like that. We have, the dreamer has located themselves in one part of their dream as, as, the, as the subject in the dream. Mm -hmm. And everything, from the point of view of the character in the dream, everything else is separate from itself and outside of itself. So for, for, from, the, from the perspective of the character in the dream, uh, that there is a uh, there is the inside um, uh, uh, of the character, which, which is all uh, thoughts and emotions, mind, and there is the outside, which is the world made out of matter. So, experience seems to be divided into subject, object, self, and other, mind and matter. And what takes place in the outside world seems completely disconnected with what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. I can't. Um, control the flow of traffic by thinking of it. Mm. Mm. And the reason that the interpretation for this is because obviously I'm completely separate from the traffic. Of course, I can't control it. It's nothing to do with me. What, what goes on in my thoughts and how fast the bus is driving down the road belong in two completely different realms. Yeah. This all seems to make sense from within the dream. Mm. When we wake up, we realize, no, that's not how it was. Mm. Everything, the, the, the dream, the dream world was not divided into two substances, mind and two, two unconnected substances, mind on the inside and matter on the outside. It wasn't divided into subject, object, self and, and other. It was one homogeneous interconnected whole. And there was a profound connection 
between everything that happened in the dream simply by virtue of the fact that the entire dream was the manifestation of the same activity, the, the activity of the dreamer's mind. Now, from this point of view, that there is a correspondence between what takes place in the mind of the dream character and what takes place on the traffic driving down the road, it, it, it's to be expected. Mm. But why? Because they are the same activity, one perceived on the inside, one perceived on the outside. Now, th th this would account, and so what I'm suggesting now is that we as individuals in the waking state are like dreamed characters yeah. in, 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 in the dream of an infinite consciousness. Yeah. From the point of view of our um, individual perspectives, we feel thoughts and emotions on the inside, that's mind, and we experience people and objects on the outside made out of matter. It all seems to make sense. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the idea that, oh, I will that ball into the hole is like saying, I can control the speed at which that bus is driving down the road. It's simply, we cannot do it. But occasionally, and it's no surprise that it happens at this at the level that you're that, that you're speaking of when we're performing at this level we are performing at a level that is as we discussed before beyond the ego yes. and we're and we're in touch then with um with 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 the reality that lies behind this appearance of diversity we are so at one mm with the totality. We have not separated ourselves out as a separate subject of experience. So although we are still, uh, you know, we still feel that we are embodied, we are really living from the perspective of the, of, of, of the universal the connection, the, the, the connection. And therefore, um, that there is this uh, profound correspondence between what goes on on the inside and what goes on on the outside. We may not quite give it the right interpretation. We may, we may say, I will the ball into the hole. That's yeah, just the yeah. best the finite mind can do. Yeah. I, I, I don't think he willed it into the hole. Uh, but I do think that what he said is trying to articulate within the limitations of language something that is true. And when you're playing sports at that level, you are so at one with the universe, you become the activity of the universe, albeit in individual form. And this enables people to perform in ways that us mortals simply cannot believe. Yes. Yeah. It, 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 you, 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 we see, you, you, you've seen this, you see it at all at, at, at elite level. We see things that defy possibility because they are, they are, taking place that they are beyond the a person's individual capability that the universe has accomplished this this could not be accomplished by a person at that moment the person has dissolved they are simply the mouthpiece of the universe mm. and that is why we love to watch sport not only participate and play sport but as spectators uh, a sports an athlete this may say, sound a little far out too, but an athlete is like a priest. Mm. Their role is to not only transcend their own limitations and perform in a way that is beyond their limitations. In other words, to become one with the universe, to be the activity of the universe and to demonstrate that in their own individual's lives. But the, uh, their role as a, as a priest is to take the rest of us with them. Mm. Almost a conductor of the orchestra, in a it, sense. It, it's, a, it, it's, it's a conductor, but, 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 uh, but, but, but to, to bring the audience to, to give the audience the experience that the athlete is having. Mm. It, it, so they're entertainers, but it's not about entertainment. That, that, that's at a superficial level. Yes, it's entertaining. But, you know, entertainment gets boring very quickly. Mm. The reason why people are so passionate about sport is because uh, uh, th th they're, th th they are taken on this journey. It it's a journey of transcendence. It, mm. th 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 in, even in watching, mm. 
and, and participating to the extent that we do when we watch. We are taken on the same journey. We accompany the athlete on their journey. And to the extent that they transcend their own limitations while they're playing, they take us with them and they give us a taste of the joy, the joy of being that they experience in their game. Absolutely. You know, you can think in the history of sport, whether it's a Pele or a Ayrton Senna or Muhammad Ali or whatever, these, they do seem to transcend their sport, but Absolutely. they bring people yeah. with them on, on, on the journey in such a ph phenomenal way. Yes. And of course, the, 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 these people then become, become icons, they become idols. And, and of course, the, the ego, the separate self in us, uh, wrongly attributes their achievement to the person mm. and we tend to idolize the person and it, th th that's an, an example of the ego appropriating the experience after the event and using it to enhance itself but actually th th that's just a, a misinterpretation of what is really happening but but that's why these that's why these these characters uh, um you know the 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 Federers, the Muhammad Ali's, the, 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 why that they, they um the Pele's that they they represent something in humanity mm. that that there is a um that, that there's a that there's a dignity there's a humanity that that it, it, in them that that everybody recognises whether you're for them against them whatever team they're playing for it transcends. Yeah. Uh, personal, temporal, local politics. It's that they represent something for the whole of humanity and the whole of humanity love them for it. Mm. E even if their characters are a bit rough around the edges, it's not about character. It's about something that is prior to and transcendent of our, our characters as, as, as individuals. individuals yeah. and, it, and, it, and, it, and it brings me to, I was thinking then as we, as we were talking about these these white heat moments, Rupert, in, in, in sport, these, these great occurrences, that one of the things that I hear so many times, not so much from golfers, because you can keep playing golf for a long time, really, pretty, pretty much until you, you can't do anything else, you can keep playing the game of golf. But most other sports, you have to, you have to stop playing at some point. And the number of times I've, I've heard cricketers say that if, if I could only just put the pads on one more time, I would love to be able to do it. And I look back and I didn't really enjoy the game for its own sake while I was while I was playing the game, and and for a lot of sports men and women when when they stop playing the game, or stop playing the sport. It's a very very difficult time because a, a huge element of their their being has has changed. Again, from 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 a non dual perspective, what what sort of thoughts would you would you give for people going going through that experience, essentially losing something in in their lives? Yes. Yes. Well, in, in a way, it's a what they're experiencing is a kind of death. Yeah. Yeah. Because w w what is death for, for us? It's we, we lose our capacities. We, we lose our we lose everything that defines us as a person. We, we, we lose our, our mental abilities, our physical abilities. So they, they are. And if one's identity is wholly invested in the content of one's thoughts, uh, the abilities of one's body, um, the looks of one's body, and, 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 and so on, then as these diminish, we will feel a diminishing of our sense of ourself. Mm. And uh, hence the, the depression, the despair that ensues. So, uh, however, one who has um, not invested their identity in in the, uh, the 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 results of of their in in this case that their sport then that the, the, there's a natural letting go, just as there is in, in in the death process you 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 naturally let go of your 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 faculties qualities and and, and so on but you don't feel a diminished sense of self as a result of it in fact rather the opposite I'm sure you 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 know. You see this, it's, it's very notable. Some elderly people, as they, as they get older and older and approach death, as they begin to lose their faculties, for some, this is a, a, a depressing mm. condition. And, and obviously, it's also associ often associated with, with, with pain, which is, of course, very challenging. But for others, they become lighter, they become more radiant, mm. 
They why? Because everything that is not essential to them, their thoughts, their abilities, their the, the, the qualities of their mind and, and their health and so on, is, is is being taken away from them. But there's one thing that can never be taken away from us, and that is our being. Mm. And in some people, as they approach the death process, their being begins to shine. It comes out of the background of experience and it begins to shine with its innate peace and, and quiet joy. And this is why for some people, some elderly people are, are, are very radiant. Now, you're talking about a, a, a situation halfway through your life uh, when you're 40 years old, say, you, 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 you stop playing tennis, for instance, or you stop competing professionally. So if your identity has been invested entirely in the in, in, in the abilities of your body, you, you, you're, you, you start slide, sliding down the rankings and a year later you're not playing at all, then this is going to be accompanied by, by a diminishing sense of oneself and the depression that, that accompanies it. But if one has learned to, to, um, to find one's sense of fulfillment in oneself, that then that the falling away of your career is just the fall, it's just like taking off a garment and you're, you're free to, to, to go on in some create new creative endeavor. Mm. You don't feel diminished by it. Yes, there may be a poignancy, of course, in, in, in letting it go. I'm not suggesting that there wouldn't be, but you wouldn't feel this diminished sense of self. Mm. And therefore it wouldn't be accompanied by this, um, the, uh, d the depression and d despair. And, and that's something that, that, um, is perhaps missing in the in in, in the world of of um, sports psychology. Mm. Um, so much attention, I imagine, you know, way more than this than, than I do. So much attention is is placed on you know playing the game at the best of your ability, and, and but but this this preparation for uh, um, for retirement. It's not something that can be you can start thinking about six months before you retire. It it should really be it it should be part of the, the the understanding that we're talking about, not necessarily the attitude towards retirement, but the the understanding that we're speaking of. I feel should should be woven into an athlete's um, training r right from the very word, right from the beginning. And, and it is. It, I've, I've certainly experienced in team environments. It's almost the you know, almost the forbidden subject, really, whilst you're actually playing the sport to even think about retirement, because why would you be wanting to think about retirement when you've got a game to win on Saturday or a tournament yes. to play? Yes, but it doesn't need to be framed as retirement, because what is a retirement? As we mm -hmm. said, it's like a death. It's the loss of one's faculties. And what's required is the, the recognition of that part of oneself that is never lost or never diminished. So it doesn't even need to be framed. You don't no. need to talk to a 20 year old about retirement, but you do need to talk to a 20 year old about, about that their innate being that is independent of whether they win or lose the game. Mm -hmm. If that is established early on in an athlete's game, then two years before retirement, it, it, it wouldn't actually even need to be addressed because the understanding would already be there. Mm -hmm. Mm. I've heard you use the metaphor, the sort of uh, acting metaphor of John Smith and King Lear, that, that John Smith is playing the part of King Lear. And, and in effect, what we're talking about here is, is, is John Smith not playing King Lear anymore, but exactly. playing another role. Exactly. After all, um, uh, golf, it, it, it's not what you are. Golf is something you do. Mm. Mm. You know, you have not always been a golf. When you were a, when did you pick up your first golf club? It was probably was pretty. Quite early. Late, it was uh, it was fourteen when I started. Okay, before. fourteen. So you know, when you were ten years old, you were not you were yourself, but you were not a golf player. Mm. Golf has been added to you. Mm. It's not essential to you. It's what you do. It's not what you are. Mm. So yes, the actor John Smith, who plays the part of King Lear. He, John Smith doesn't become King Lear. No. King Lear is what he does, not what he is. Mm. Sport is what we do, not what we are. Mm. And all the, the, um, all the psychological difficulties come when we identify ourselves with what we do. Mm. 
Football is not something I do, it's what I am. I am a footballer. No, nobody is a footballer or a golf player or a doctor or a nurse or a bus driver. Or a we, we are essentially our being, our essential self or being. Playing football, being a doctor, a nurse, a bus driver, these are activities that we do. They don't define who we are. Mm. The mistake we make is to allow these activities to define who we are. That's when our suffering begins. It, it really reinforces a, a story that I've heard uh, a number of times about uh, Tiger Woods and his upbringing with his, with his father Earl and, and his mother Coltilda, that what they reinforced to him many, many times over was that if, if Tiger had a bad day on the golf course, it was Tiger the golfer that had a bad day on the golf course. It wasn't Tiger the person that had a bad day on the golf course. They, they made it, they created a really safe place for him to express himself in the sense that his, that his being was not dependent on the outcome of what a golf ball did. Yes, exactly. Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a beautiful way to do it. And, and, and that's a, it's a very nice example of a parent uh, tailoring the understanding that we are speaking of mm. to their nine-year-old boy. Mm. I, I've got a couple of friends who, who um, have a son and when he was young, uh, they, they, they come to my retreats, but when he was very young, six, seven, eight years old, he used to come back from school and, and all the emotions that he felt, um, uh, uh, sadness, uh, um, upset, loneliness, jealousy, whatever it was, that they would personify these characters. Oh, sadness has come for dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this was a, um, a beautiful way of parents uh, um, adapting the understanding we're speaking of and tailoring it to the situation itself. In this case, a, a six-year-old boy. A six-year-old boy would not be able to have the conversation we're having. But yes, you can make a story up and see that sadness is not who you are. It's, you, when you say it's not, we are not sad. Sadness is, is, is an emotion, a coloring, a cloud that visits us, that hovers like, like a cloud in the sky for a while and then passes. It's not who we are. Mm. It's something we experience. Mm. So, y yes, that, that, that's, um, well, it obviously stood Tiger Woods in, in, in good stead. And, and it's not necessary, actually, to even formulate this understanding in the way you and I are, are formulating it. What's important is that we, we experience it, that, that it's not me, the person that failed. It, it's Tiger, the golfer, the, 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 the character that, that, that all that's important is to is to experience that and that then liberates you fr from from this um uh, uh, feeling that you are this uh, bad this failure which of course translates into your game the next day mm. Mm. thinking in a slightly different direction Rupert, and, and somewhat playing devil's advocate that as, as an understanding of the non-dual approach and, and essence of yourself and what we've been discussing this afternoon on a, on a very practical singular everyday basis and I'm probably going to answer my own question here but is, is, is there a danger of a, a sort of sense of nihilism creeping in that I, I don't need to do anything because I've, I've got everything that I need here, here with myself what, 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 what thoughts would you have that on a literally a practical day-to-day -day existence The, the, the brief, the short answer to your question, Carl, is, is no. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I there's any would be. <laughs> danger. But let, let me explain why. Yeah. What, when you feel happy, Carl, what, what is your first impulse? When, when you're happy, it gives you energy, doesn't it? And you want to do things. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. You don't feel happy and curl up in bed and pull the covers. No, you, it, as you say, it gives you energy. In other words, you said it gives you energy. You want to do things. The first thing you want to do is express it, is share it. When you feel love, what do you do? You want to express it. You, you call a friend, you ask them out for dinner, you, you, you go for a walk. You, 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 so, so th these, these um, emotions, that they're, they're um, the, the, the first impulse is to be shared. Now, I, I, I would actually would in, 
I would give an interpretation to this to explain why that is. It's because at the deepest level, uh, I would suggest that our being is shared. Mm. We are se- obviously our bodies are separate, our thoughts are separate, our feelings are separate, our histories are separate, and so on. But at the very deepest level, I would suggest that we all share our being. And therefore, the deeper, the more one is in touch with one's innate being, the more one actually goes out into the world and shares and expresses its qualities. Mm. Mm. When we're depressed, that's it. When we're depressed, we feel I am isolated. I'm a, depression is the height of the feeling of separation. I'm alone. I can't contact, I, I can't reach anybody nobody loves me when you're depressed you close the door you curl up you shut yourself off Mm. because the depression is is an extreme expression of the sense of feeling separate when you love that's the opposite love is the the feeling that we are one Mm. you do the opposite you open the door you go outwards you share you communicate you express that's what enthusiasm means it, 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 enthusiasm is, is the is the sharing of our innate joy. So, so no, I think there's no danger of of nihilism. Mm. On, on the contrary, mm. happiness and love that the, they just naturally and effortlessly communicate and share themselves. Mm. And for somebody in in the in the in the, the pit of the despair that you were just just. Um, alluding to but again what would be some thoughts on the first steps of pulling out of that well you say someone in the pit of despair so once once we've sunk down below a certain threshold in ourselves what once so there's one thing is to feel the mild sense of lack you can feel a mild sense of lack and still function in the world. You still get up, you still go to work, you still look after your kids. But depression or despair sometimes gets so strong that we fall below a certain threshold. Mm. And, and then even basic functions become difficult. Mm. Looking after others, we neglect others if we're a parent or, or, and we neglect ourselves because there's no longer the energy it's like we've sunk below the surface now once one's sunk below that threshold it's very difficult to get oneself out Mm. if the sense of despair sorry the sense of lack is only mild you can still think oh i'm struggling i need some help i'm going to go and call this person i'm going to watch this youtube clip i'm going to attend this meeting i'm going to read this book there's still some motivation to 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 uh, elevate to to elevate to find happiness but once you've sunk below that you tend just to sink deeper Mm. so that's where you you need help from the outside Mm. and very often the sort of understanding that we're talking about carl is um feels out of reach for someone who has sunk down so low Mm. and a, a more um, a slightly less radical approach is necessary. Mm. For instance, as you know, when you when you when you're depressed or in despair, your your, your body it, it closes down, it tightens up. Well, sometimes ju- ju- just um, some kind of physical intervention, you know, a, a, a yoga exercise. Mm. It's very often it's very difficult to be to feel completely depressed when your body is fully open and expanded. Mm. It's very often to feel miserable when you smile. Mm. So sometimes, uh, sometimes a change in our emotions has an effect on our physical body, but it works the other way around too. Sometimes you have to make an, a change at the physical level just to help one come out of the, the, the depths of despair. Mm. And that opens something in you where you can then begin to consider what we've been considering. And sometimes it, 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 it's very often some, something physical, like like exercise. Walking, uh, simple things like walking. Walking, yoga, 
um, you know, it, it's very difficult to be miserable when you're running. You can be miserable when you're walking slowly. Mm. Why? Because it, walking slowly, you, you do it automatically. You, you can be thinking about your misery when you're walking slowly. If, if, you're, um, if you're running or you're, you're, you're focusing on, 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 on something, something that requires your attention, as soon as we give our attention to something other than ourselves, we're relieved of our depression because when we're depressed, we're, we're, our attention is we're, we're, we're self-absorbed. Mm -hmm. So anything that takes the attention away from our self-absorption and walking is it, it, it's a, it, sometimes it needs to be a little bit um, a little bit more than that. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting. Have a cold shower. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a cold shower. Because it's such an intense experience, our attention goes to the sensation. Mm. In that moment, our attention is taken off ourself. We are relieved of our depression. Yes, it's an uncomfortable sensation, but it's not nearly as bad as our depression. Yes. It, it mm. breaks the cycle of depression. Mm. So that, that's what that's it. Once we've fallen below a certain threshold, uh, a skillful coach or a therapist or a counselor will, will have to do something just to temporarily break this cycle of self-absorption. And it could be something very small, very practical, a yoga class, a walk, a cold shower, a run, uh, 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 something to give your attention to. And then there's an opening and then it's possible to explore a little bit more deeply what we've been exploring. You could, at, at a certain stage, you can say or ask yourself, what is it that is aware of your experience? But but that, I wouldn't recommend that for someone who's in the depths of despair. Mm. Which which again kind of brings us neatly back to sport, Rupert, doesn't it? That you know in 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 those situations of of despair, to actually get out and play a game of tennis or play a round of golf, even though it's the last thing you probably feel like doing. Yes, can can potentially be the first rung on the ladder to begin Absolutely. to elevate. Absolutely. And, yes. I, and, and I think, you know, golf as a, as a pre, pre pandemic was, was struggling in terms of participation. It isn't now because golf was the first thing that everybody could do when the, when the sort of restrictions were lifted. But I think in, in previous years, golf has always tried to attract younger players, which is great, but I don't think it sold itself enough to the older generation whereby it, it literally can be, a survival coping mechanism that there's suddenly that you're out in nature, you're, a, you're absorbed in a game, however frustrating it might be, you're interacting yes. with others. It's a, it's a very, very powerful tool for, exactly. much, for much more than it, just the game itself. Exactly. You're, you're taking your attention off yourself as a person. And mm -hmm. as you say, you, you have to give your, you have to give your attention to, to, to the skill. I, I, I went and I'm embarrassed to, to tell you, Carl, that I have, once in my life picked up a, a golf club and it was about two weeks ago with my um, 22 year old son who's become a very um, keen um, golfer and he right. was here over over um, Christmas he's at university at the moment he was here for the holidays and he, he was going to the range outside Oxford and he said do you want to come along and, and I okay that's fine anyway so he he um he t just I said you have to teach me how to do it it was a little bit like the blind leading the blind but anyway he, he's considerably more advanced than I am anyway he 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 showed me how to hold it how to do it. and within within five minutes I, I I realized oh my goodness now I understand why people can become obsessed for their whole of their life I could I could see just from five minutes that the uh, how much of oneself is required mm. that, that how, how how many elements uh, uh, that that every single muscle in the body involved mm. the precision of it the beauty of it that uh, I, i'd suddenly it, it really, really it was like in that moment I, I it was like a door opened and i suddenly understood what what it was and this was just practicing on the range you you you, you Add then the, uh, the competitive element, you're out in nature, the social element, the interaction with other people. Yes, it, it's, um, it's uh, I hope it doesn't sound too, too far out, but it, it's a, 
it's a kind of it's a spiritual path in its own right if if properly interpreted that that, that, that by, by which i mean it is a, a path that leads us from the sense of being a, a limited isolated separate individual to feeling one's shared sense of oneness with all other people and and with nature it is a pathway towards that mm. yes it it, it, do, it does and and do you know recently Rupert, there have been more and more examples with with people that i've worked with and coached that the the actual effect of of, of gratitude has on 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 it's, it's, again it's a paradoxical almost reverse engineering really that somebody who is who is immensely grateful for the opportunity to be able to play today for its own sake is a, is actually engineering a very very good state to coordinate movement a very a, a very good state to make good decisions a very good state to manage emotions all of, all of those things but you begin with the gratitude rather than waiting for the gratitude exactly exactly yes exactly gratitude is your is your is your natural state it's not it's not because of what happens it's in spite of what happens yes because again it's an expression of the same understanding that we're speaking of here God. what what happened when we feel grateful let, let's say you feel grateful to a person it, it or let me state it the other way around you would never feel grateful to someone you hated no why because when we hate someone we feel separate from them that that's the the most intense feeling of separation is hatred mm -hmm. and by definition you don't feel grateful what about someone we love it it, it goes with the, it, it it goes with the emotion we by definition feel grateful to anyone that we love why because when we love someone we feel our oneness with them we feel that we share their being at an essential level and gratitude is the, the inevitable consequence of that feeling so if we start with the gratitude what we are really doing is we are opening this channel whereby you you feel uh, that the sense of separation that normally divides us diminishes and this opens a pathway to to recognizing this shared being the feeling of oneness that underlies all of nature and, and and with that comes in, I think, a, a, a more awareness, Rupert, of the essential preciousness of, of each opportunity to play. You know, one of the one of the books that I that I wrote, the, the Lost Art of Playing Golf. We, I, I related an experience that I'd had a couple of years ago. And I was down in the south of England. I was walking on a golf course early one morning. It was a beautiful early spring morning, and all of those sort of starting to get some heat in the, from the sun, and just glad to be alive days. And I was walking along and saw on one of the tees there was a bench, you know, and on the bench it's it was a plaque on the bench, and it, and it said to the to the Tuesday boys, and underneath the Tuesday boys there were there were four names of four guys who, who obviously would have played every Tuesday. But the poignant aspect for me, and this was where the story emerged, was that underneath the Tuesday boys was four names, but four, four dates of birth, and sadly four dates when they'd passed away. And it really struck me that these guys would have played every Tuesday, week in, week out, for year after year yeah. after year after year, and you know they would yeah. have moaned and groaned about their aches and pains. Yeah. The, the realisation that I had was that every one of them had actually run out of Tuesdays. There were, there were no more Tuesdays left for, for any of them. And, it, and, it, and it's become quite sort of quite popular with, you know, with, with people who've read the book that the, 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 the story of the Tuesday boys has really resonated with people that the, the idea that the, 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 there are finite opportunities for us to do, to do anything, be it golf, tennis, cricket or whatever. Yes. Yes, yes absolutely. Rupert, it's been a, a wonderful pleasure. I was looking forward to uh, today's conversation, but it's uh, far exceeded any uh, any expectations. I think we've I think we've moved in some uh, some really interesting directions because we didn't have too much of an agenda. Yes, exactly, and, and likewise, it's it's. I was looking forward to it too, but and had no expectations. But it certainly exceeded my my um, expectations, and I I love the way with your um, skillful questioning we, we, we've spoken about the the, the essential non-dual understanding but but really made this deep connection but, but between the non-dual understanding and and, and sports mm. um 
So, and I, I think, as you, I, I know the, the, the motive behind your, your, your asking was we're wanting to bring this understanding it more into the lives of, of, of sportsmen and women, mm. uh, and, and you obviously recognise the need for it. Um, so, um, no, it's a beautiful conversation. Thank you, Carl. So I mentioned that the books at the, at the beginning, Rupert, the, um, the latest books that you'd written, Being Myself, yes. and be, Being Aware of Being Aware. Would that would be for people to understand more about what you do and the works that you put? Would, would I that think be the so. first port of call, would you say? I, th I think so. Uh, two books, they're taken, they're trans really edited transcripts from um, guided meditations that I've given. They're, they're simple, they're short, they're very experiential, they're not very theoretical. So yes, being aware of being aware or, or being myself would, would, would be the place to start. Yes. And your own website, I know you do uh, great webinars and, and yeah. teachings and things like that. Yes, yes, rupertspira.com, everything's there. And my, my YouTube channel has got an embarrassing got number of hundreds, of, 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 hundreds <laughs> of, of clips. So that's another good place to start. At, um, but you must, you must know you've now you've experienced it, Rupert. You must continue. You push through the golfing door. You I must have, yeah. and understand that your tennis is the is a great, great foundation for the game of golf. Generally, you, tennis players make good golfers. You know, I, I'm very interested that you say that, Carl, because I I didn't formulate it, but I intuited it. So many. I have a marvelous um, tennis coach, and I play at the local club with here, um, John Maskins, and um, he he plays golf and speaks about golf. But even just this this five minutes, I realized that that much of the training that John has given me, the attitudes that we've discussed, the, the psychology, as well as the finesse of, 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 the, of the, 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 the physical aspect of the game, I could see how that would just immediately translate into golf, except that w w with them, um, with tennis, you, you, you have a a, a kind of a one percent margin of error, whereas in golf it's like point not not one percent. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can I immediately I immediately I thought, oh, this is I could see the 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 the, the beauty of the game. That the, the immediately it became clear to me. I understood it was like a door opened. I realized, oh, this is why people become passionate about it. So. And the awareness that you have of the tennis racket just needs to be placed on the on the head of the golf yes. club. It's the same. Yes. It's the, a lot, exactly. A lot, of, a lot of people in golf make the mistake of focusing on anything other than the implement in the hand. But if you become really aware of what the golf club yes. is doing, you become you can become a very competent yes. golfer very quickly. Yes. 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 Good. Well, thank you for that encouragement, Carl. So, at least I gave you something back at the end. There. A yeah. Bit oh no, no, you, no. You, you've given me more than that. I, I've. It's been a beautiful conversation. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Rupert.